Hi, it's Kernetex here again with another video in the series about building Linux from scratch 10.0 on a Raspberry Pi. So um, here I am with a freshly booted um, Raspberry Pi. Um, this procedure would be the same for any um, host operating system. But basically what I need to do is to um, load up the browser again and get a prompt up to be able to resume the building of Linux from scratch. So I'll just position these. Uh, make this a little bit bigger. Right, the reason why I'm checking the size of it is because the window is because um, some programs need 80 columns and specifically I'm thinking of the um, kernel configuration it complains if uh, there isn't a terminal of at least 80 columns so the first thing I'll do is become the root and the second thing I'm going to do is make sure my LFS flag is set which it should be because it's in the one of the startup um, scripts and the next thing I'll do is get rid of this tab that I used yesterday to shut down the system and I'll go back to where I was yesterday get another home page up for the Linux book and this time I'm looking for the beginning of installing Linux from scratch where we enter the truth. So it's this bit here preparing the virtual kernel file systems. In fact, just before that, um, if you do need a reminder, um, we need to go to this place first, mounting a new partition, and then we can go to preparing the kernel file system and entering the truth. So three things we're going to need to do here. We need to mount the partition if it isn't already mounted, um, if you've not set yours to auto mount. So I've got the directory, let's see if it's mounted by DF minus H or you can use mount. Yes, there it is. You can see 1.6 gigs used, we've still got 430 odd gigabytes. Next thing I'm going to do is check the swap partition and yeah, uh, the Raspberry Pi systems reloaded the swap file as you would expect. So I'm just going to remove that um, to save having the um, any chance of the compilation process being slowed down if anything needs to switch the swap, which is unlikely now because uh, most of the packages got left are uh, fairly small and I wouldn't have thought they needed more than 4 gig of memory. So the swaps are all in place, so that's basically that part of the book done again um, obviously if you've got separate home or user directories or any other directory separately mounted um, you'd need to mount those if you haven't already set them in the FS tab of the Raspberry Pi so I'll get rid of that one now we've got to remount the virtual kernel file systems and remember these are going in the subdirectories in the MNT LFS and they're attaching or ghosting the state of the system virtual kernel file systems and by doing this we're exposing them um, to our true environment uh, some some packages will need access to these um, I imagine the requirement for these is mostly during tests I would have thought rather than the actual compiling and lastly this one again it shouldn't need to be run if you've run it once and it's done something you shouldn't need to um, need to run it again but as with like, all these little things if there's an exception they've, they've put a little test in there and if the test passes then it'll do what it needs to be done and if it doesn't pass then it will just drop gracefully out um, and not do anything 
So if, if you are unsure, just run it and uh, there should be no problem. There's only that one exception with GCC where a library uh, was renamed where it's looking for the 386 or the, um, uh, well, not a 386, it was looking for 386, 486, 586, 686. For the, IE for the 32 bit or for 64 bit Intel um, to rename the file, that was the only exception because we're on ARM. The, it, the test would have failed, it wouldn't have renamed it, and the name we need was different anyway. So that's the only exception. So we've mounted that, we can get rid of that tab. Now we re enter the truth. If you remember, I was using additional C flags and CXX flag settings. Um, and also make files I'd set as well. So what I'm going to try and do first here is just scroll back on my history, just pressing the up arrow, and yeah, there's the true command there. So just check that it's the right one. The important bit's the bit at the end, really, the bin bash login plus H. Um, also double check the C flags, CXX flags there, and the make flags. So they're all there. Press Enter. Re-enter the true environment. Let's just double check. It looks okay. Yep, there's the sources. Count to sources. And yeah, there's all our files. So we're ready to continue with the rest of the build.